Okay, so it's just about time. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider number 26. Happy Thursday to you all. Please remember, as usual, this call, this call is going to be recorded and posted in our Horizon podcast, as well as in our YouTube channel for you to check out later. Uh, also, please remember to ask your questions on Menti so we can have our usual Q&A session at the end. Let's just start with the updates from the engineering department. Luca, if you would like to please start. Sure. Thank you, Angie. Hello, everybody. Today we have uh, massive news to share, but I'll keep it uh, as the last item to grow your curiosity and also to allow the last people joining the Weekly Insider in time to listen. So let's start with the new uh, Zendif software 2020. Between last Friday and this Monday, the blog post regarding the upcoming uh, Zendif 2020 was posted. And Eng in particular contacted all our partners and exchanges, except the biggest three, Binance, Bitrex, and Huobi, because those were covered by Rowan. As usual, the communication was sent through all the different uh, channels, depending on the partner. Uh, all of them appreciated uh, the fact that we are giving such such a, uh, let me say, big uh, notice and some partners already replied so this this is good uh, also because uh, uh, the biggest pool that we have today Luxor Tech is uh, is already uh, supporting us on on the new release uh, then I'd like to update you on uh, the activity that uh, was recently started uh, the ZND code audit this is conducted by a third party. And if you followed the last quarterly live stream, you will remember that we presented this item as a part of our roadmap. So there is a third party looking at our code. They were able to review things already. No, no issues were found. So everything is proceeding well. And since we are receiving weekly updates uh, on that, we will be able to keep you posted on the matter. Uh, an update on the dev activities that we are currently uh, working on. We are moving on with all the open projects that we have. So the consensus implementation in sidechain, the sidechain test framework, the modifications to the main chain required by the backward transfer logic, uh, the explorer upgrade and sphere by horizon upgrade. Just a few words on some items that are worth being mentioned. We added the main chain sidechain test creation possibility in the sidechain test framework. Uh, we are also processing the code review of state and wallet updates for robust support. We, ha um, we are also on a final stage of testing robust related changes in the history and adding unit tests with negative cases. And we also started tasks related to the backward transfer logic support in the SDK. Uh, on the other hand, for Sphere, Sphere by Horizon, this week we were able to fix a regression that was identified the UX, by the UX team. So uh, thanks to the UX team for that. And between yesterday and today, we fixed a couple of last minute display bugs, new ones. Uh, that were identified and fixed very rapidly. So a, a new final build was compiled and shared with the UX team today. They already confirmed us that everything is okay. So we are moving on with the code review and the packaging of the new release for production. Moreover, this was an exciting week because we welcomed Ulrich Habuk in the team. So Ulrich is Austrian, 44 years old. PhD at Faculty of Mathematics, but please, Urish, since you are here, uh, take the word and introduce yourself to the community. Thanks, Luca. So, uh, as Luca said, I PhD uh, in math from the University of Vienna, and this PhD was actually not crypto related, but I got into crypto during the last seven years uh, when I was a combination of research fellow and lecturer at the University of Applied Sciences at uh, Campus Wien in Vienna. So I've done scientific work on privacy enhancing technolo technologies, including searchable encryption, the design of secure protocol in real world applications, such as password manager, and more recently on anonymous cred credentials uh, and or identity provision. So all of these uh, make heavy use of zero knowledge techni techniques. And that's what's brought me to, uh, to send uh, to Horizon. So here I am. I'm a newbie. And I'm really eager to dive into the mathematical technical challenges of the SAND blockchain. 
So as I'm quite fresh here, there's not much more to say from my side. So I'd like to hand over the mic to the next one, whoever it might be. Luca, you? Yeah, it will be me again. Thank you so much, Burish. Having you here is uh, exciting, uh, but not as exciting as the news we have to share today. So for that one, I'm passing the microphone to Alberto now. I mean, how can you rank them in excitement, Luca? <laughs> you don't want to know, Rob. <laughs> Please, Albert. Yeah, it's zero knowledge. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, Luca. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, big news. Uh, finally, this night, that Zendu white paper has been published on Archive. And uh, uh, it's also uh, about to be published or, uh, on ePrint. So uh, now we can finally uh, speak freely about it, and uh, uh, I can give you a brief introduction, at least uh, about the philosophy behind it. So um, obviously we are uh, speaking about sidechain, and uh, uh, as you probably know, I mean, the basic idea is to have a, a universal construction allowing the creation of decentralized and totally decoupled blockchain applications that are able to use Zen. And this goal uh, that could be seen maybe uh, simple, in reality is quite complex. If we want to keep uh, both decentralization and decoupling from mainchain, and this is mainly related to the, to the need of validating the transfers between the sidechain and the mainchain without knowing the rules of the sidechain. So, in the previous model, um, uh, I mean, the one that uh, uh, we published the previous paper and uh, uh, where we're basing our, let me say, sidechain construction um, and the modification we mentioned, we were making use of a, uh, of a decentralized set of actors that are called certifiers that had the responsibility to certify that the transfers between the sidechain and the mainchain followed the sidechain rules. And this mechanism was proven as secure under honest majority assumption. But uh, we wanted to go even further. Uh, in the meanwhile, we were also building, let me say, de developing the SDK and, and, and all the modification in, in the main chain. And we wanted to, to go further by constructing even a model that... Uh, doesn't have this kind of need. Uh, and as we were saying before, the issue uh, is how to provide proof of legitimate transfers to main chain without main chain not knowing the rules. And moreover, probably we should first uh, define what is a legitimate transfer. Uh, so, because uh, we want to prove that the transfer between the side chain and the main chain was, uh, let me say, correct and so and legitimate and okay let's define very let me uh, briefly what is a legitimate transfer in a blockchain uh, we can say uh, simplifying that a legitimate transfer is a transfer that spans existing coins it, that were uh, existing at some point in the history by providing proof of owning that coins and moreover, we can say recursively that that coins were created from a legitimate transfer too. So uh, at the end, we, we need to uh, prove that the transfer from the sidechain to the main chain were spending in the sidechain some coins that were created in a legitimate way and that the previous coin were created in a legitimate way, and so on. Okay, so we can see these as a sort of a proof of a sort of valid computation. And more specifically, we, um, re we realized that we could solve this problem, I mean, given this kind of proof, uh, using recursive snarks. And what does this mean? This means that, okay, if we see the sidechain uh, as a sort of uh, um, state 
trans a list of state transitions where for example we receive some coins uh from the from the main chain and this is a state transition and then after we have a transaction in the in the side chain that spends this coin that were existing by providing proof of having the private keys for spending that coins and then after we have another transaction that spends this new utxo by providing proof of having that private keys and let's say for example uh, we have another transaction again that uh, we draw the coins from the side chain to the main chain by providing again proof um, of having the private keys we can see them as uh, let me say a set of sort of proofs that prove the changes in the side chain and moreover that prove what are the list of backward transfers that has to happen in a specific epoch side chain epoch so uh, let me say in a way similar to coda uh, we um, let me say we can create um, a sort of uh, cumulative proof let's say that is uh, the composition of all the state transition happened in an epoch and a sidechain epoch and uh, we can and this composition this merged proof is a succinct proof of all the transitions that happened in the sidechain in that epoch and moreover a proof that prove the uh, list of withdrawals for that specific epoch and okay so now we have a proof that reflects some rules because i mean when we speak about snark proofs uh, let me say we have we will have a circuit in the in the in the in the side chain that uh, reflect the rules of the side chain because every every side chain can have its rules so we we will be even able to provide uh, each side chain with a different uh, set of rules by providing different kind of let me say proving keys and verifying keys so what we are doing we are allowing the main chain to validate to cryptographically validate the transfers between the side chain and the main chain without not knowing the rules but just knowing the snark verification key associated to that side chain so when you're going to create a side chain you're going to define a snark verification key that reflects the rules of that side chain and then um, when the sidechain will be operating will provide at the end of the epoch when it will uh, provide a certificate with uh, um, um, with backward transfer and what else he will provide the proof that the the the, the, the certificate is valid uh, providing this proof that is let me say coherent or or let me coherent with the verification key that is uh, associated to that sidechain so um, I mean, this is just, uh, let me say, the basic idea behind it. There are many other considerations that are uh, um, involved in, in, in the model. I mean, um, for example, protection about uh, one of the trickiest part that is data availability attacks. And uh, uh, we propose uh, a, a solution for that. And and so and you will see in the paper that there are two main sections. One uh, is the Zendu part, that is the cross chain transfer protocol. We can see it as um, <clears throat> the the main chain side of um, of the the, the this side chain uh, verification system. No, the the verification of the let me say of having uh, a verific verification key associated to uh, a side chain having uh, the list of backward transfer verified and so on and then after we will have we have in the paper another section that um, is the latus side chain that is uh, a specific uh, let me say implementation uh, of a model uh, 
um, that uh, make usage of recursive snarks for, for providing the proofs, uh, for solve the, uh, the, the data availability attack by, let me say, structuring uh, the data in a specific way and the proofs in the circuits in a specific way, uh, prevents uh, its censorship resistance. So if even if even with a, a majority, a malicious majority in the sidechain, Every user will be able to uh, withdraw his coins, and so even if the the, the, the sidechain is totally, uh, let me say, uh, maliciously controlled. So, uh, I mean, maybe uh, that was a bit long, but uh, I hope useful at least to have a uh, well worth it, Alberto. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Alberto. So we hope you enjoyed the reading and uh, also we will have a dedicated uh, live stream uh, for it. So uh, we don't have the date for it yet, but uh, we will uh, inform you uh, and it will be another opportunity to, to talk about it. It's all for now from here. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, guys. Amazing update. Let's continue with Alan uh, for some updates regarding uh, NoteSite. Yeah, thank you. A uh, little difficult to follow that. I have a much more mundane update. Um, we've got our secure node trackers. We've hit 35,000. And I've been working on updating some of the queries on the back end to help scale the servers that we have. And Chronic has been working on building the uh, next version of Zen to make sure that that gets out on time, uh, which should be getting posted in the next few days, I believe. That's it for now. Thank you, Alan. Now we're going to go uh, with the updates uh, from the help desks with Spencer. Oh, I think he's not, maybe he's not here. Okay, we're going to continue uh, with Gustavo uh, with the updates from UX. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So first and foremost, congrats, Alberto, and the whole team for this major milestone. Really happy with it. So on our side this week on the faucet, We've been working on uh, adding Facebook register on the faucet so we can drop the requirement of having a Gmail. We finished the feature today, so we'll be testing on the next couple of days and it should be live next week. We also been uh, testing, working on the, the sphere testing, but uh, look already gave that update. And along with the Milan team, we are working on the sidechain model for the for the Sphere wallet, and it's all on our side. Thank you, Gustavo. Now we're going to go with the updates uh, from BD with Banu. Hello, everyone. Banu speaking from Georgia. Um, so about uh, conferences and our presentation, we have got both Rob's and Alberto's profiles listed at Blockchain UA website, which is an upcoming conference in Ukraine. And for those who do not know yet, we have a very strong representation there. Rob will be talking about sidechain use cases, while Alberto, along with Roman Olinikov from IOHK, will present our upcoming extended model white paper. Uh, speaking about events, I also added several proposed interesting events at our Monday event planning board, and please have a look at them to have time to plan for our participation there accordingly. And I'm also in talks with a, a large exchange about listing the uh, listing Zen, uh, the, na the name of which I cannot tell yet, obviously, but hopefully we will be able to release news soon, hopefully in a week or two. Um, and Rob, I have sent the details about a potential AMA at Telegram, and please have a look once you have uh, time for that, so that sure. we can. Thank you, Anna. Well then. Yeah. So that we can plan in in time uh, if you decide to participate. Uh, and that's all from me, and back to you, Angie. Thank you, Anna. Now we're going to go with Lucy uh, with the marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Uh, congratulations to uh, Alberto and the uh, engineering team and the whole team. Uh, well, and the 
really the entire community for the release of the new sidechain uh, extended white paper. So we will be announcing the, uh, the release officially tomorrow. Uh, so for all the people who come to our weekly insider today, uh, you are getting the very first and very insightful taste of this, you know, really significant milestone. So this is really one of many benefits or, you know, or, or perks our uh, weekly insider offers, you know, to get major updates before, uh, before anyone else, before people who don't come. So make sure that you are, uh, you know, you come every week. Uh, and then also we sent out communications about upcoming uh, core software up- upgrades earlier this week. Uh, it's mandatory update, uh, updates. So we will provide updates and uh, send out notifications on social media once updates is available for, uh, for download. Uh, and then also Roadmap 2020 will be released on our website very, very soon. We're just doing some final review. Uh, and then uh, we started a new round for the sidechain video quiz. So congratulations to the last round's winner, Dashan from Canada. So your special uh, sidechain t-shirt is on its way. Uh, and this round's uh, quiz will end on February the 14th on Valentine's Day. So be sure to join before then uh, as we are moving very quickly to our next uh, uh, sidechain milestone. Uh, and we are about to release our newest uh, sidechain extender white paper, uh, just like mentioned. Uh, so right now it's, uh, it's uh, the perfect timing. It's a good time to learn more about our side chain, uh, about what we have already done. We also started our fan uh, fan art competition on Monday. We know that we uh, we have a lot of very creative and artist people in our community, and we want to empower them and provide them a platform to showcase their talents and as well as a channel to express our community support, you know, for, for the project in an uh, uh, inspiring way. So the winners will be rewarded. Uh, they will receive some uh, swag with their artwork on it uh, and also to have their artwork or design featured on the uh, Horizon store uh, and earn all pro, uh, proceeds from the sale of their designs. So if you are, um, you know, if you, if you do, you know, drawings or have a, uh, uh, Photoshop skills or anything like that. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you to show your uh, show your work and also uh, you know to show your support for for Horizon. That's it for me. Thank you, Jonathan. To you. Hey everybody, can you hear me? Okay. Very well. Oh, perfect. Okay, I'm actually in Panama today uh, visiting uh, Dean and Rob and Rosario. So really excited to check out the city. This is my first time. Um, so on the growth side, we've officially kicked off the test of our uh, Ghana outreach. So we're working with Mohammed from Students for Liberty. Uh, we're doing a three month test to try to onboard um, new merchants as well as create uh, meetups in Ghana. So uh, that was started this week. So we don't have any progress updates yet, but Hopefully, we'll have something more to share in the coming weeks. Um, I'm also working on a newsletter for February, which should go out uh, early next week. A lot of really interesting information, including um, new team hires. Um, And also, I'll be working on a newsletter for the white paper, which was just announced. So congratulations, Alberto and everybody on the engineering team for that. Uh, lastly, we have some really exciting updates to the faucet. As Gustavo mentioned, for people that don't have Gmail, you'll be able to log in with uh, something that's not Gmail. First, it'll be Facebook, and then it will be other kind of integrations as well. And uh, for next steps, we're looking on how we can integrate Horizon with WhatsApp. The more I travel to Latin America, the more I see that there's a huge opportunity Uh, to integrate Horizon into WhatsApp, because basically everybody here uses WhatsApp and every business uses WhatsApp too. So it's kind of crazy for us not to use it. So Gustavo is doing a great job and we're looking at how we can integrate in a way that's useful for our community. And that's it for me this week. Please remember to ask your questions on Menti and uh, back to you, Angie. Bye. Thank you, Jonathan and Lucy. Uh, now we continue with Rosario with some updates from Procton Engineering. Not much updates today. Uh, uh, 
Luca went into a detail with the code audit, and uh, just as a reminder, that's going to be a process that will be ongoing uh, going forward, and especially as we uh, go through the implementation of, of uh, the sidechain logic. So it'll be extremely important then uh, to have this uh, third party, uh, a third party, do a uh, code audit uh, before it's pushed to a production environment. So we are uh, we continuing connecting departments in key areas. Uh, most recently, uh, establishing a, a process and linkage between UX and engineering with Sphere by Horizon, and that's been uh, working out nicely. So I'm I'm happy to see that. And uh, another process improvement is the, uh, of course, establishment of the PM team and just uh, refining our communication uh, process. And a shout out to Ruben who wrote a script to uh, email uh, all of our exchange and uh, exchanges and partners. Uh, and this uh, reduces the, the manual uh, email process going forward. So it's just uh, little things like that just add uh, significant process improvement and allows us to focus on uh, more important things or things that uh, require more attention. Uh, so that is it for now. Thank you. And congratulations, Alberto. Thank you. Oh, thanks, 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 Rosario. And um, uh, we just saw that uh, uh, the paper has been also published on the on the print. So fresh. That's news. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, Rolf, would you like to add any comments or updates? Uh, yeah. Thank you. On Friday, I had the opportunity to uh, go to Washington, D.C. and uh, be part of the Government Blockchain Association at the Capitol um, there. And I um, saw that uh, one of our partners, Fiscal Digital, that uh, Peace2 had worked hard to be able to digitize some voting records in Guatemala. Uh, the leader of that movement, Carlos Torriello, uh, got the Courage Award. Uh, so it was great to be present for that. And it was uh, great to see that there was, you know, uh, one of the great use cases of blockchain is immutability in recording records. I had the chance to listen to a lot of state representatives about what they were looking to use blockchain for. Um, and immutability in records is a big thing. And I know we use in examples of what a side chain can do, something like car titles. Um, and so I've been trying to think, what's a straightforward type of record um, thing that we can build a side chain for that would get large amounts of use that isn't currently being used. So my, my thoughts are currently leaning towards being able to show that people have ownership of things not as important as cars and houses, uh, but smaller things. So maybe a, a side chain that shows people have rec uh, ownership of phones or computers or dogs or cats and the ability to, to take pictures and prove ownership of those things. Um, so I just want to throw that idea out there and see what uh, people thought of those types of things. But if you build something like that, it can easily be extended into more valuable things. Um, and it's something that, that would be a straightforward application for sidechain. Anyway, that's uh, just what I'm thinking about these days. Thank you, Ralph. And now we have Rob for the final part. Uh, thanks, Angie and Ralph. I love those ideas. Um, so, yeah, we should definitely flush those out. Very cool. Um, okay, so first off, big big welcome again to Ulrich for joining our team. And unlike Luca, I have no idea how to rank whether or not uh, Ulrich joining the team is more exciting than Zendu. Uh, I have no idea. On, on one hand, we have a huge technology breakthrough. And on the other hand, we have a huge personnel breakthrough. And our organization growing the way it is, I think it just speaks volumes for what we've been doing so far. So really happy about that. And guys, a big shout out to the team for last week's live stream and making it a huge success. Um, just again, reiterating to the community, there's an enormous amount of work that goes on behind the scenes to get that beautiful, final, shiny product that you see in the, the quarterly deck. Um, and then just the coordination, the prepping, the, the rehearsals that go on behind the scenes to make sure that it's executed well. Um, so thank you to everyone on the team who made that possible. And thank you for the community for actually paying attention to it and watching and listening to it um, because we wouldn't do it otherwise. Um, okay, so I'm going to run through a few things here. I know we're running a little over time. 
Um, Jonathan mentioned that we ki- we are formally kicking off a merchant adoption experiment in Ghana with one of our uh, rock star community members, Mohammed. Extremely excited about that. What we're focusing on really here is rather than um, you know looking at just pumping a bunch of money into a particular area, we're trying to be very intelligent and in experimenting with different types of incentive programs and on the margin looking at where we have the highest effect with those incentives so that we can iterate those, swap them out, uh, modify them. And you know the, the thought process here is we want to scale this type of effort globally, obviously, right? We want to be a, a massively successful global project, um, but not every market's going to be the same. So I think it's really important to think about incentives uh, as they apply to a particular circumstance within particular markets and be flexible so that we can modify them and amplify them or reduce them if they're successful or not successful. So that's exactly what we're doing uh, with the experiment with Mohammed in Ghana. Uh, we have a three-month term on that. We'll see where it goes uh, and see if we need to change anything or you know, scale up or modify. And we'll for sure be reporting the results. Um, okay, I, w- I want to reiterate our, our mission here. So the mission that, that Lucy talked about on the live stream and, you know, we're, we're getting out there now. We need to, you know, really foot stomp this and, and hammer it home for people. So we are here to empower people and bring the world together by building a fair and inclusive ecosystem where everyone is rewarded for their contributions. So there are many ways to interpret this, and I'm sure that everyone listening to this will have their own interpretation of what that means. But it's an extremely powerful mission that resonates at the human level, because ultimately what we're doing is we're building a human ecosystem facilitated with technology. It wouldn't be possible without the technology. But at the end of the day, it's about bringing people together and making their lives better in some measurable way. And there will be many different measurable ways because there are many different ways that people want to participate in this ecosystem and different ways that they can derive better, you know, maximum value from it. One takeaway that I have from this personally is I look at this as like, you know, I, I think about what are the, the types of social missions that I want to be involved in in my lifetime. Uh, this mission for me is about eradicating poverty. And, and that may sound extremely grandiose and, and crazy, but really the, the incentives portion about what we're doing here, we want to use economic incentives and a system that's built where users own infrastructure on the system. They own decision making. Right, and they own different elements of it. And peer to peer, it's empowering. It's permissionless. At the end of the day, I'm most excited personally about these types of you know uh, economic applications and opportunities that we can provide for people that would have no no chance in the world of having them otherwise without this type of system existing. So I'll, I'm just telling you my personal interpretation of this, and there are many others. There's the inclusive aspect. There's bringing people together. I mean, th- there are many people who love the technology aspect of what we're doing. There, there are enormous empowering aspects to the privacy side of what we're doing. All of these things are important. And everyone that comes into this ecosystem, this passion about what we're doing, will have their own takeaway. And, you know, the good thing is if we're laying the infrastructure so that people can, you know, catalyze the system in the ways that are more most meaningful to them. Okay, so all that to say that the economics of the project are so much more powerful than are evident with where we are right now. And, and this, you know, I, I, it, it leads, but I won't talk in, about it right now, but it leads into what we're doing with Zendu and with this, um, this sidechain protocol. The, the way that Alberto and the team have designed the economics of the system are brilliant uh, to actually linking back to this mission and catalyzing this type of, um, you know, social welfare. Okay, so that, that's me stepping off that soapbox. Now I'm going to piggyback on something Rosario said. So we just formally kicked off third-party code audit of ZenD, our core protocol, uh, up to a certain point in time, um, and we're going to have many audits. And now the important takeaway here is that uh, doing third-party audits routinely is now part of our operating rhythm. So this is a, this is what we're going to do all the time. We're not going to stop, and we're probably going to ramp up these efforts uh, because the bottom line is... Uh, we, we have to take a deep sense of responsibility for our action in this industry. And this is something that the industry hasn't been doing very well. I'll, I'll, I'll say, you know, we, we obviously part of this industry and we want to lead the way or be part of leading the way of bringing a deep sense of responsibility. And we have to realize now that as we grow, uh, we are, you know, bringing in more resources. We're bringing in more stakeholders, right? There's real value on the line here. 
And we have to be responsible with the way we handle every aspect of what we're doing. And doing third-party audits on our code base is, is fundamental to that. So it's just going to be part of what we do going forward. Um, now, the big, the big elephant in the room that Alberto did a fantastic job of going into some, some detail. Really, it's an overview. You have to read the paper to get into the details there. Um, and there are plenty of details depending on your appetite for them. But a, a couple of points that I'll say. So on the one hand, just reiterating that we've just gotten the paper published on archive and ePrints, or maybe it's live on ePrints now and pending on archive, but there will be two uh, open public forums where scientific work gets published and you're, you're going to be able to access the paper there um, very soon, or, or I guess now, um, for those that are actually paying attention to this, this weekly insider. But we'll also have this up on our website. We'll blog post about it. I've seen the, the review of the blog post so far. I, I think it's excellent. Um, so all that information will be there. But do your part as community members, like, share, get the word out, because Zendu is a breakthrough. Now, why is this such a big deal? And this is where I'll, I'll get into a, a little bit of my, my takeaway of what's going on here. So our sidechain system, we, we basically have two sidechain systems. You, you can look at it that way. The first sidechain system, like our first generation sidechain system, is one that we, we publish an alpha on or um, you know, push some code to our testnet, um, an alpha version of it, with really a play consensus. So the developers can start seeing what's going on and really also to signal to the market that we're doing something extremely innovative um, unique and novel, or and, and you know, really something our own. Beta version of, of that first version, side chain, first generation sidechain system, we're looking to push to our test net uh, this quarter. So really March is when you should expect that. This is where we, we complete the consensus model that, that Alberto went into with Ouroboros Prowse. So you'll have a very sophisticated consensus uh, you know, model running on a, a test net, basically a test net sidechain on our test net. Um, so you'll be able to send test net Zen back and forth with that. So it'd be a complete circuit there. And that's really important. It's a huge breakthrough. But what Zen do is, is the second generation system. So we've already architected the second generation system before even going completely live into production with the first generation system. You can see how aggressive we're being here with the development schedule. And, you know, maybe from the perspective in the community, it may not look aggressive. I have no idea. But from our perspective, it's extremely aggressive because we're talking about building things from scratch here, from R&D, where we're even doing things like modifying elliptic curves or finding new elliptic curves that actually could work in production at some level of efficiency. Um, so these are the types of things going on in the background. You're going to for that with Zendu the paper. But the good news is, is that this this next generation system has already been in parallel development and stealth mode. Um, and this is what we're really excited to announce here. So there's a lot going on here. And, you know, it, it's, it's a huge breakthrough for the industry and for the project. And I think for the industry in the sense that, you know, other projects will no longer, will have to start paying attention to what we're doing because we're going to blow past them in terms of technology and actual application domains for the technology. In particular, with some of the business partnerships that we're driving and the distribution channels for the products that we can create on the side chains, plug them into real world situations at scale. Okay, so what else do I want to say about this? Um, a, a big point that Alberto alluded to here, and I'm just going to reiterate it because it's so important, is that a, a huge benefit of our side chain system is that for a business or an application developer or any other individual that wants to experiment with the blockchain or launch some sort of application on a blockchain, they no longer have to do that in a vacuum. With our, our sidechain SDK in this model, you will be able to do that in a way that you don't have to create your own cryptocurrency and get that currency or token traded on a market so you can actually use your system. Because that's a tough process. This is our job. This is our bread and butter. We've been doing it for years. We're pretty good at it, right? We're already on a few dozen markets and we're going to have some really high profile markets that we're, we're going to continue to get listed on. But you don't have to do that in a vacuum. You can actually leverage our system Launch your sidechain, launch your blockchain as a sidechain and take advantage of all of the tools that we provide, including Zen, the cryptocurrency that is now a gas and a transaction token on your blockchain. Um, so that is a big deal. It's a big deal for us and the Horizon ecosystem. Now this is another huge potential source of organic demand for Zen. And this goes to the point of why does Zen even exist? Why does it even have value? Right? We can talk about this from a theoretical finance perspective of why any cryptocurrency would have value. 
But I look at this as a collateral assets more so than a cryptocurrency in terms of the value proposition. Of course, Zen is a cryptocurrency and it's becoming an increasingly useful cryptocurrency. But I look at the long-term value here is cryptocurrency that will act as a collateral asset for a whole suite, a whole ecosystem of products that are now made possible with the sidechain technology. So this is huge and huge shout out to Alberto and the team for actually making it possible and our IOHK partners who provided some heavy hitting R&D and mathematical experience. So this was truly a pleasure seeing this come from idea to now paper and it'll be even better when you actually see the product. So guys, thank you for that. That's really all going to here. Um, we can open it up for questions since we're over time. Okay, so it looks like uh, uh, come a thing. Uh, the top question is, uh, how much can Rob squat, deadlift, and bench press? Oh my and god. other team members. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I've been on a, a, a a personal fitness and diet uh, regimen to actually do that. So I, I, I'm not doing anything <laughs> close to impressive numbers. I don't know if I want to get into that right now. And I can't even get into it because I'm forever. But I promise <laughs> you guys an answer. I'll, I'll max one. Oh. Maybe one Roth's here. He could spot me. Well, I think we lost you for a, a half a second there, Rob. Oh, no worries. Um, I just said when, when Rolf's here, he can spot me, and then we'll figure it out. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's move to the next uh, next question. I'm sure the same question will pop up in, uh, during our next uh, uh, week. Later, so. so the next one is, will Sidechain Beta be on an official testnet so that we can test real apps? If not, which release will be on production testnet? No, for sure. And Alberto, do you want to fill that one? Sure. Uh, okay, first, um, let's say that our parallel testnet uh, is, uh, uh, let me say, is totally uh, is suitable for testing uh, uh, the application. So um, if, you, if you're building a, a sidechain application and you want to verify if the integration is, uh, is uh, let me say, is correct and everything is working and, uh, let me say, developing on it, uh, you can you can use the parallel testing. So this will not be, uh, let me say, uh, um, a sort of um, limit for, for, for the developer. Uh, and so uh, it would be almost the same. Let's say that uh, we, as we um, uh, shown in the um, in the last live stream, uh, we have, um, let me say, in the roadmap, uh, we have different milestones that uh, are going, let me say, to include uh, a first version uh, with uh, um, in beta. I mean, that is, will be the next release. And then after, we will have another one that will uh, um, include also uh, on the main chain side the modifications that are introduced by, by uh, Zendu. So, and this means, for example, um, let me say uh, the, the withdrawal requests uh, from main chain and other cool features that are uh, introduced by the new model. And then after, we will have another release. Uh, oh, sorry, and, and another important part. Um, we will have a code audit uh, of all this stuff. I mean, because uh, as you can imagine, uh, we're introducing uh, many, many changes, many important changes that uh, we want to uh, uh, say make it secure and safe and uh, and uh, verified uh, by a third party. So we will have even a, a, a code audit. Uh, um, session that uh, before going uh, in production. In that phase, we will have the public testnet uh, that will be aligned to the parallel testnet. Uh, and in the meanwhile, we will have the code audit uh, uh, verification. And then after, only after the code audit, we will go in production. Obviously, this is made for making, let me say, the process secure and uh, let me say, without risks. Thank you, Alberto. 
Um, so the last question uh, today is, uh, can there be a video series made with Rob and Alberto going through, uh, going over the white papers in detail? So I, I think it's this is a great idea. Uh, we did something similar, a, a video series for the last release and Sidechain Alpha. Uh, so I think the community loved it, and then I believe they helped people understand better our technology. And, and for this reason, I think you know it would be great for us to do something like that for this white paper release. Um, you know, and then also you know other uh, major release in the future. So our goal, our goals are always to do our best to communicate and. Uh, connect effectively with our community to help people understand our solution for the world. Uh, plus, I, I think Rob and Roto do great on camera. What do you think, Rob? Well, Alberto does, <laughs> at least. Yeah. So, so you I can... Think both of you do. <laughs> but yeah, no, for sure. We, we could do that. That's yeah, I think that would be a great idea, yeah. yeah. And Rob, you'll be heading to Milan, so perhaps you, could, you guys could do it in person. Even better. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So those are the three questions of the day. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thoroughly worth it. So have a great day. See you.